welcome to At The Talk Face, a series for the educator which focuses on putting into practice the revised national curriculum statement in your classroom. In this episode, we're taking a look at language in the classroom. South African culture is rich and varied as one might expect from our diverse heritage. We're not called the Rainbow Nation for nothing. We're a multilingual country and besides the 11 official languages, many more are spoken here. In the classroom, this wonderful diversity may present the educator with some interesting challenges. In most intermediate phase classrooms, the language of learning and teaching is English, but for many learners, this is not their mother tongue. Today we'll be visiting Mrs. Garrido's class at Jeffy Prep in Johannesburg. Mrs. Garrido is a math, science and technology teacher who every day deals with the practicalities of teaching learners who speak a range of languages at home. Do you find that language problems in math, science and technology are harder than in any other learning areas? I wouldn't say it's harder, I would say that it's a problem across all the learning areas. All learning areas have um, different terminology, so the terminology in math, science and technology is difficult, but there is terminology in other learning areas that is just as difficult. So the learners in my class speak a variety of home languages. At the moment I've got five language groups, Zulu, Sutu, Tswana, Portuguese, those children have come from Angola, and English. Like tell her to fold the circle. Children on the playground talk to each other in their home language or in English. Um, it depends on how their core group of friends is organized, but a lot of them do mix home languages and English, very conversational home language. Sometimes children talk to each other in a language that I don't know. I don't teach in their mother tongue, I can't teach in their mother tongue, but I let them discuss and talk in their mother tongue. Um, it helps them in the class to feel more relaxed and more confident, and they're able to participate and contribute more because of this confidence. And that is an advantage for me in that it helps them to understand better, which makes my job a little easier. The school governing body has an important function in planning and managing the school's language policy. The context and circumstances of all schools vary enormously, but all school communities need to be aware of the importance of an appropriate language policy. The language choice for this school is the first language is English, and that's the language of learning and teaching. Second language, which is the first additional language, is Afrikaans, and the second additional language is Zulu. There was a referendum with the parents to choose both the medium of instruction and the second and third language offered. We chose English because of the resources we have. The teachers are English speaking, most of them. Then all the learning material is basically and mostly in English, so our textbooks are in English, our charts are in English, our additional material to support in the classroom are in English, so that would, was the logical choice. We encourage our teachers to, to use a multilingual approach in the classroom, and then we also encourage our teachers to learn an additional language such as Zulu. Many teachers use other languages besides English in the classroom. Some teachers use mother tongue and then put in special subject words like ratio or laminating or gas in English. But in the playground, the word gas may refer to electricity or petrol. These are not the scientific meanings we want. So we have to explain the English subject words very carefully by using lots of examples. Some teachers do it the other way around. They teach in English and then put in mother tongue African words. This can help the learners, but again, we must be very careful of the meaning of the words. For example, if the teacher uses the word moya for wind, remember that in other languages, the word moya means air, breath, and spirit. So do the learners really know what the teacher means? In maths, some teachers use the Kosa word Nkantatu for triangle, but it could also mean three-legged or three-cornered. We are talking to Dr. Carol McDonald of the Witt School of Education. For five years, she studied the impact of changing from learning in the mother tongue to learning in English in the intermediate phase. This study was called a threshold project and it produced a number of reports and a popular book called Eager to Talk and Learn and Think. 
Dr. McDonald, the Threshold Project recommended that children should begin learning in their mother tongue in the foundation phase and continue onwards in the intermediate phase. How did you come to that conclusion? Well, the Threshold Project, when it started, um, the policy was that children in African schools changed from their mother tongue in grade four to English as a medium of instruction um, in grade five. And we were aware that that caused the children a lot of problems. They'd gone from three or four subjects in their mother tongue and changed over to nine out of 10 subjects with long textbooks in grade five. Now we wanted to see what the precise effects of that policy was. We were aware that it was a very sensitive policy because parents wanted children to learn English and to learn through the medium of English as soon as possible. They felt that this was very important. And in the South African context, of course, it's a, a political issue as well as a curriculum issue. Now, um, we felt that um, we could establish that children learning an African language with a very good course in grade one and continuing with um, an African language were able um, to then transfer to English um, more easily than if they transferred too early and hadn't learned enough of their own language first. You claim that children who speak African languages could do more advanced thinking in their mother tongue rather than in English in grade five. How did you show this? Um, one of the things that we did was to test children's concepts on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, these were Setswana speaking children. Um, um, they were tested by a mother tongue speaker of Setswana and um, I could um, understand Setswana enough to note their, um, their, their answers. And we asked them a number of questions actually more difficult than the stuff that they had in their textbooks. On a one-to-one -one basis, they were able to think and express themselves in their mother tongue. Um, for example, we had here a question about um, a children looking at a range um, of different leaves. And then and they, well, we asked them to name the shapes of the leaves, and then we asked them to group the shapes of the leaves. Now, in fact, um, in English, the children didn't have the names of, of things like this has a, these have a small curves, um, or this has a heart shape, or this has a serrated edge. But as one of the seven tasks in that experiment, the children were able to explain those kinds of things in their mother tongue. We also did another piece of research. What we had here, was that one class um, got pre-tested on, on a concept test and another uh, in English, and the second class got pre-tested in Sitswana. And, and they got very similar marks on this pre-test, 40.7% and 43.9%. Now the children who were tested in English then went on um, to have 20 lessons. This was also on plant structure. They were, to, they, they, they were taught and they learned in English, while the second class had 20 lessons also, but they were taught and learned in Setswana. Um, then we tested them on the same test as the pre-test. Now the children who had learned through the medium of English, they score was 42.3. So the improvement of, from the pretest of what they knew before they were even taught was just a mere 1.6%. Now what we had here in the second class when the children were taught and they learned in Setswana in the post test, they actually scored 73.3%. And so their improvement from what they, learned, what they knew before they started to what they knew after they had done that, that module was actually a large 29.4%. And these are the kinds of gains we're looking for. Um, this was a typical kind of result, and we, we interpreted that as children using up all their psychological energy in simply learning the English and not actually learning the concepts. If that's true, should they not continue learning in their language? Pamela, um, there's evidence that um, is developing and coming through in research that's been reported on in sub-Saharan Africa, um, that in fact children will benefit greatly if they learn through their mother tongue from six years to eight years, and the benefits there will come by the time they finish school, in other words, in grade 12. Mrs. Carida's technology lesson is on the go, and she has set the children a task to do in groups. Hi, 
Mello. What we've been doing is we've started working on pivots and levers in technology, and we've discussed what a pivot is and what a lever, what a lever is. And they're now working in their language groups, and they're going to follow a set of instructions to make a seesaw so that they can identify where the pivot and the lever is on the seesaw. where the lever is on the seesaw? Uh, the lever is, the lever on the seesaw is where the two uh, pictures are sitting on. Oh, well done. Azrael, could you tell us what was the most difficult part about making the seesaw? I'm putting the split pin into the, um, check it into the um, lever and trying to make it um, stay there. What was for you the most fun? Playing with the seesaw after. And Azrael, can you show the class where the pivot is? Well done. Go sit, go sit, go sit. As the learners go through intermediate phase, the language becomes more demanding. The language is more than talking about scissors and other objects. Knowing the names of things is no longer enough. Now the language deals with how things change and how they compare with one another. In other words, the children need language to talk about relationships. In our next scene, we see Mrs. Garrito ask the children to use language to talk about the relationship between the pictures of a plant and the days on which it received water. Now what you're going to do in your language groups is activity three. So everybody look at activity three on the page. It says, the next four pictures in figures six, seven, eight, and nine have got mixed up. Can you put them in the right order? These learners are thinking hard. You can hear it in what they say. They're using the kind of language we need for comparing, explaining, and predicting. They can use this kind of talk in English, Sutu, Zulu, or any other language. The important thing is, this is the kind of talk they need for success in maths, science, and technology. They're not just learning the names of things. They're talking about relationships between things. Figure six, and then figure uh, seven, and then figure nine. Now that you've discussed your answers with your groups, we're going to have a short report back. Graham, Sasha, Ruth, Mishka, come up to the front. Figure six is the plant on Tuesday because the flower is so closed. Figure seven is a plant on Wednesday because the p plant hasn't got water as yet. 